muera de temor. Well, we did a bad job of uh, bringing on our, our newest guest, Ryan yes, Kittle. Yes, Ryan, who welcome. Has a, yeah, up and coming YouTuber, I think, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, one two hundred subs, something like that. RK Outpost or something like that. I yeah. have met well, Ryan in some streaming <laughs> forum. Thank Ed's you, Ryan, for coming you. on. Uh, uh, yeah, no problem. I I was kind of just chilling back here, listening to you guys speak, and then uh, I just all of a sudden in the stream, so I'm like, oh, I better better sit up straight. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, right. That, pressure's that, on. That was Gator. I, that was Gator. I, I can't stay not. for for super long, but I okay. got the invite from Flas of Phoenix, and I, I just had to stop by at least for a little bit. To talk about the two towers so it's been good to listen to the discussion for sure well, is, is two towers your favorite? your favorite yeah i was gonna ask the yeah. same question what's your ranking yeah. man is, is the gun to my head um i think that <laughs> the two towers is the best one definitively the best one of the three uh but return of the king is my favorite uh if that makes sense like for instance um I think Empire is the best Star Wars movie, but Revenge of the Sith is my favorite. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Even though, obviously, Return of the King is much more Return of the Jedi feeling than um, than uh, Revenge of the Sith. But, yeah, I just... Return of the King just... It makes me feel... I, I love watching it because you do get that happy ending. You get everything kind of resolving, and you get to see these characters who are finally completing their journeys. What I love about The Two Towers is that you get to see that middle part. You get to see them becoming like who they will be at the end of the story. Uh, and for me, I know you guys were kind of mentioning like your favorite parts. To me, the Battle of Helm's Deep is awesome. Everybody thinks it's epic for obvious mm -hmm. reasons. Yes. But the dichotomy between this, um, like the stoicism and the like inspiration that Aragorn's continually try to provide and like never giving up hope and all these things while you have uh, like, Gimli and Legolas sitting there like joking with each other like in the midst of this thing that's my favorite part the dichotomy between those two things and how even though the Battle of Helm's Deep goes on and on and on you get like this desperation and yet at the same time you get a little bit, bit of that lightheartedness between these two and also with those two I like in the two towers that you start to see this foundation because you didn't really see it in the first in fellowship two towers where they develop the foundation for the true reward that you get at the end when you realize these guys despite all of their differences despite the fact that they've been trying to ha hate each other they actually have a deep love and affection for each other as friends so those are some of the things that i really take away from two towers and it's also like a very masculine way how, how you you grow out with some person you kind of like push back see if they can take it and after a while you're like yeah. oh yeah this guy can hang yeah right. let's go yeah we, we got yeah. this and uh yeah it's it's awesome and if you have brothers that's a very brotherly like thing to do as well yeah oh I, for I, sure i love the two towers that uh that initial face that gimli gives after legolas goes or should i give you a box yes is uh. gimli almost looks at him like you motherfucker and then like, goes, I'm gonna ah, slap you. Yeah. Uh. yeah he, he goes, what? <laughs> but then he goes, ah, you know, he realizes what, what he's actually doing. And yeah. you're so right, Ryan. Like that, that's really where that bond really started to form a lot. And and you know, they're counting 22, 23, mm -hmm. you know, and and that competition, but also that brotherly love is is extremely masculine, but is also extremely powerful. Um, and we see that in, in, you know, bo both of us are, are prior military. You see mm -hmm. that in, in, uh, uh, in military esque settings, um, is that competition, you know, that, that, uh, striving for, for being the best, but also having that, that brotherly connection. It's such a, such a great, I, I think their, their dialogue is perfect with each other and how they interact with each other is, is great. Well, so, yeah, it's almost, their key is that they are from uh warring factions the mm -hmm. dwarf versus the elves so that's really what made that relationship really entertaining and meaningful yeah and that's because they're from they're supposed to be enemies from different worlds and they're forced together for a greater cause so they have to work together and that's something that you mentioned the military does do with people where you take people from different parts of the world different backgrounds and you force them to work together for a greater cause and they and they can learn to work together and be and become friends where we don't have a, enough of that now where it's so much division everywhere else but this is a good example of how you can you can sort of you can form those bonds with anyone if you're put in the right situation yeah 
Um, yeah, when, when you're forced to work with somebody for like you know 12 hours a day for like six months straight or something, <laughs> you inevitably like have to form a bond with them. Like there's no <laughs> choice; it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. And that's kind of that what you had here. True.